What is going on YouTube? Welcome back to Hot Take Tuesday. Episode 11 of Season 2 is officially here. Finally, we have four hot takes today. I did not think we were going to get this episode in, but got home a little earlier than I thought I would. Asked you guys for your hot takes, and we're going to get it in. I th because I feel like this is one of the most important videos of the week. Because it gets you guys involved. It gets you know the fans involved in the audience, which you guys are very important to me. So if you would like your hot take featured in the future, join the Discord. Every two as I ask for it, you drop it. I pick the best ones. Voila, you're in the video. So, Red the Rat is the first one we got here. But if you do enjoy content like this, Colts content, NFL content, and, you know, and whole news, we're doing predictions all year long. Make sure you like, subscribe, put the post on vacation, so you don't miss any future videos. Dang, don't know why I did that. Don't ask, but let's not waste any more time. Red the Rat is our first hot take. His hot take is Jonathan Taylor will ruin his career wanting to play for money rather than his passion. So, let me get an opinion out about these running backs. So, I understand where the running backs are coming from, and I understand where the NFL is coming from. It's a fair argument on both sides. So, we always talk about the running back position being the most gruesome to the body. It's, you know, three, four years into your career, your body is ruined, it's rough, you know, you're always getting hit, going through the trenches, getting hit by these three, you know, these 250, 350, 350 is a little on the heavier side, but you know, these heavy guys, you're getting hit, you're getting crushed, you're getting all these injuries, bruises, you know, all these tears, and it really takes a toll on the running back. And the running backs want their money because if they're going to do all this stuff to their body, I mean, they can't just sell themselves short. They have to make some kind of decent money. You know, you look at some of these rookie quarterback contracts. They're getting almost $10 million a year. You know, Anthony Richardson got almost $10 million a year. And the running back's looking at that like, bitch, where's my money? You know, what's going on here? They're not even proven yet. And we're some of the top at our position, yet we could barely get $10, $11, 12000000 million. Now, two possessions is not really a fair comparison in terms of positional value. Quarterback is the most, you know, it's you know it's highest on the, on the positional value chart. There's no, there is it's just the most valuable position, so that's why it's paid the most, and, and they last long. But running backs, they don't last long, and it's been proven that these running backs don't really have that much of an impact on a team winning the championship. If you look, you know, winning the Super Bowl, if you look at the past 10 years, there's not many running backs that are making a ton of money that that team wins the Super Bowl. A lot of the, you know, a lot of teams that win the Super Bowl, the running backs are being paid like under a million, if that. It's wild. But so I understand, I, you know, I'm not questioning their passion. I'm, I honestly respect it because they're respecting themselves. They're respecting their bodies. And if you're going to put yourself through that, you need to ask and you need to try to get the best you absolutely can get. But then you look at it from the NFL side, you know, the NFL side, the business side, you pay all this money and it goes to waste because the running back has hurt the whole while. I mean, you know, it's lost money in the franchise. So it's completely understandable. On both ends. So put yourself in the player's shoes. And imagine what I just said. You know. But. So I don't think that's the question. I, I do not think passion. Is the question. There are In the NFL. They're this far for a reason. They freaking love the game. They work hard. But. I think it's. You know. I don't think. He's, I don't know if he's going to ruin his career. But he may already be on the downside. You just put on the PvP list. Was it. I think it was for the contract situation. Chris Bauer talked to him. It's most likely that. But even if it was an ankle problem, still from last year, because he didn't suffer like an Achilles, an ACL tear, because he would have definitely been out. You know, he still wouldn't have been practicing. He wouldn't practice regardless. So if this little ankle surgery, I'm not saying little, like it's nothing. If this ankle surgery and this, you know, this ankle is still bothering him, that's a red flag in itself, even, you know, if it's not him just knocking the money he wants so there's so many different ways you could look at this but jt ruining his career um i mean he's not ruining himself i mean he's ruining him he's ruining himself by making them by trying to make money over the passion i guess you could say uh i don't really agree with that too much but i'm gonna go will ruin his career wanting to play for more hmm that's a tough one to rank because it's just like it's tough on the players, and you understand where they're coming from. But, mm, I don't think he's going to ruin his career. I'm going to go warm. 
because I think there's a chance, you know, he falls on a cliff and he ruins his chance to get the money and have a long-term deal. So basically ruin his career. I'm going to go warm. I think, I think, I think there's a chance he's a running back. Um, but no, I'm going to go cold because he's saying player is going to ruin his career. So I think it's, I think it's somewhat likely. So going cold with this one. Next hot take we have here is from gold four, three, zero seven. Deontay Bakes will end up being the best corner from his class. Real quick, I didn't do any homework on this episode because I just got home and I'm like, I need to get this Hot Take Tuesday episode done. I just need to get on it. Uh, so let's look at cornerbacks drafted in the 2023 NFL Draft. I'm just blanking. I need to go check. Devon Witherspoon. Oh man, you got Devon Witherspoon here. I completely, I wasn't thinking about him. That's that's an obvious one. I don't think he's gonna be better than De than Devon Witherspoon. He has an incredible situation. Emmanuel Forbes. I think he could be better than Forbes, but Forbes is a playmaker. Do not discredit Forbes. Forbes is very good. It's just his size, his frame is very worrisome. Is he gonna get manhandled at the next level? I don't know. Christian Gonzalez. I'm kind of iffy on him. I think he's a boomer bust prox prospect in a way it could be very good or he could ultimately just be horrible but he's in a great spot with the Patriots so I think he's gonna be I think he's gonna do great there uh and then you have Deontay Banks from Maryland Joey Porter Penn State Julius Brent's Kansas State Cam Smith Tyreek Stevenson you go on the list you know it's it's, it's less likely uh Deontay Banks considering the situation that he's in um will he be the best cornerback in you know of the rookie cornerbacks of his class Wait, so is he saying just this year or will end up being the best? Okay, so he's saying from this class. So I'm assuming it's going to be his entire career. Best corner from the class. Um, I don't know, man. I think Devon Witherspoon's got that. Devon Witherspoon, I've loved him coming out. He's going to be incredible. Great athletically. Incredible spot to go to. Uh, Joey Porter Jr. can be good. Julius Brents can be good. Julius Brents is a boomer bust type of guy. Christian Gonzalez, he's a boomer bust type of guy, I think. I think people are putting too many eggs, counting their eggs too fast with Christian Gonzalez. Manuel Forbes, uh, I'm not sure if he could have a better career, if he could bulk up a little bit. I think Emmanuel Forbes can have an incredible career. So, really, I think it's between, uh, you know, there's so many good corners coming out of this class, but a lot of them are boomer busts as well. I think Emmanuel Forbes can, Forbes can be a boomer bust if he cannot get his frame right, if he cannot pack on a few pounds because. For how light he is, it's scary. Is his body going to hold up? Is he going to be able to hold up against contact against, you know, NFL talent? It's NFL competition. It's a big question. But, you know, to be the best from this class, uh, you know, he seems like a very one-sided cornerback with pretty nice zone upside. He can, you know, he's good in zone. Uh, but he is, but man is his thing. Man is his thing. So, um, a man cornerback, you, 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 know, you, you know, usually see them be pretty dominant if they're, if you know, if they're... If, if they reach a high end of their game, if they reach an incredible level, they're usually, like, really good. Uh, but Devon Witherspoon, I think, you know, I'm not just saying it because he's the highest pick, but he's in a great situation, probably the best situation, you know, that he could have been in. He's not going to have to be number one or number two, you know, because switch going back and forth. Uh, so that could be another thing. If he's going to be against number two his whole career, is that going to change the way you look at him? But I think he's going to be capable of covering number ones. You know, is he going to take oh, – he's going to leap – Tariq Wollen real fast. I don't think so. I think Tariq Wollen over oh, may have overachieved a little bit last year. I want to see him do it again, considering he has such a great year. I want to see him do it again before I really count him in as, yeah, he's here to stay. He's a great cornerback. We need to see him do it for a couple of years. And it's very difficult to do that as a corner. So that's why I'm saying that. Same for Sauce Gardner. So Deontay Banks being the best from this class. I just think there's too many good corners, and he's a little one-sided right now until he gets better at zone. He is incredible athletically. He has a lot of great traits. Uh, stays hip to hip. He's not scared to be physical. He's good at impress. Uh, it's a tough one. It's a really tough one to say. So saying that he's going to be the best, uh, I am going to go, I'm going to go warm. I think it's unlikely because of how many good cornerbacks are in this class. But there's a chance. You know, I'm not saying you're crazy. You know, there, you know, there's a fair chance he is, can be one of the best corners in this draft. But uh, maybe hot, maybe hot's a little better because I think Devon Witherspoon is just incredible. 
Gonzalez can be great. I'm going to go hot. I'm going to go hot. He can be very good, but I just don't think he is. I don't think right now I would not take him over these other guys. Now it's not right now. It's a class all-time career. But honestly, I think Devon Witherspoon is going to have the best career of this class. It could be him. It could be Joey Porter. It could be, you know, Julius Brents could have a really good year. But Julius Brents is high risk, high reward. We don't know. Um, Tyreek Stevenson is a bit underrated. I don't think he's going to be the best from this class. So Cam Smith is pretty good. He's got a good situation over in Miami. A lot of really good corners that came out last year. Very deep class. But, uh, you know, I just think the cornerbacks are that are better than him are much better than him. And, you know, may, you know may, maybe not much, much better. But I'm telling you, man, I just have high hopes for, De for, for Devon Witherspoon. So I'm going hot with that one. Tones. Mahomes will injure himself and be unavailable for eight weeks. Chiefs go three to three and five in that time. I like this one. Now, Mahomes getting injured and not playing. You know, if it's not a serious injury, which, you know, if it's serious, he's going to be out eight weeks. That makes sense. So if he's out eight weeks, the Chiefs go three and five, right? We, you know, a lot of times we like to say that Patrick Mahomes is, you know, the only reason why the Chiefs are great. It's not. He is definitely one of the main factors and definitely one of the main, definitely the, you know, obviously one of the best players in the league. And he's one of the big time factors and the Chiefs always being great. So if Mahomes comes out, you're going to see a drop off. You know, it doesn't matter what kind of team you have. If, if you have Mahomes come out, it's going to be a drop off. Now, who's their backup quarterback? Let me see, because that matters. That really matters. Didn't they draft one? Or did they sign someone? Chiefs depth chart. So the Kansas City Chiefs depth chart, as of right now, I'm looking at ESPN. Blaine Gabbert. That's not a horrible backup. Could be worse. And it's not a bad situation. You have an incredible offensive mind coach, some good weapons. Uh... No, I, I don't think that's a bad situation at all. You know, the defense could be a little better, but it's not horrible. I think the Chiefs. Could, I think the Chiefs going three and five is not a is not a bad bad assumption. If Patrick Mahomes goes out for a few weeks, you know, it really matters on who they're playing as well. Um, you know, and what stretch it is. That's a big fact. That's a big variable as well. But mm, Chiefs going three and five without. The, you know, without Mahomes. I'm going to go cool. I think that's... Hmm. I'm going to go warm. I'm going to go warm. I said they go 4-4. Four and four. They go, f you know, 50-50. Because Andy Reid, I think, could plug any quarterback in there and do a phenomenal job. He did, have, he did have Alex Smith in there, who's actually a decent quarterback. And, you know, he had Chad Henney for a little while in some games because uh, Patrick Mahomes was hurt. And he made it work. So, I, you know, I think 3-5 and five is reasonable but i think you know four and four i think i i think they can win a little you know a few more games with that because of the firepower the mastermind that's behind all of it and andy reed there's a lot of good talent on that team whether patrick Mahomes is on there or not i can see them winning more games and just surprising people you know yeah Mahomes is that great and you're gonna have a drop off but is it gonna be so much of a drop off that you can't even have a winning record with that squad i don't think so so i'm gonna go so yeah i'm gonna go um i'm gonna go warm because it's possible you're gonna see big drop Big drop off regardless if Mahomes goes out. It doesn't matter who you are. So, last hot take we have here is Alec Pierce will be a top 10 receiver within the next three years. This dude knows. This dude knows how I feel about Alec Pierce. He knows I love Alec Pierce. And I'm really excited. I'm really pumped up for Alec Pierce. And I like Pittman. I just need him to be able to show me what he did prior to last year. Last year was not very good. Now... It, you know, it's all of his fault. No, but he did have 99 catches and didn't even have 1,000 receiving yards. Quarterback's gonna help. No, but when you have 99 receptions, a lot of times that's on you know that's on you to get a few yards after that. You know, yards after reception. So yards after catch. It's really questionable why he has that many catches, but not even a thousand yards. But I mean, Pittman is such a good weapon. You know, he can be such a good weapon. I mean. Alec Pierce, though, I think he's got a much higher ceiling. Last year, the quarterback situation, he wasn't that he wasn't half bad. Now, he didn't have a good start in Houston, dropped a wide open touchdown, sure. 
And then he had the concussion, sat out the week, came back, and he was a different player. I think he dropped a, one or two other passes, but they weren't as impactful as that one. You look at games like the Kansas City Chiefs game, the Broncos game. He's, he was always playing his heart out, and when he had to go up and make a contested catch, he freaking did it. He can adjust to the football at a very high level, and I, you know, I sometimes I kind of think I should have put him on my top 50 wide receivers list. I don't think he has shown enough to be better than those guys. But I think, you know, considering I didn't even have him in the top 50 this past year, I think he could, I think he could absolutely crush that and, you know, be within the top, you know, maybe 35, 32 after this year. Now that's high praise because there are a lot of really good receivers. That's the thing with the NFL. Being top 10 is very difficult for how good they are. But Pierce has a high ceiling. He could be a monster. You know, in Denver, in the Broncos game, they might that may not have been his best game statistically, but that's the game that he impressed me in most because you go up there and everyone everyone was huffing and puffing, but it seemed like Alec Pierce just had an extra zinc to him. He had an extra step, and he didn't care. He kept on working no matter what, and he made it work. You know, he made some really impressive catches. Matt Ryan threw a couple of passes, and he went back, and he found a way. He threw some horrible passes. Pierce just seems to find a way, and I think having Stephon Gilmore on him in training camp last year, I think that really, that really made an imp- that really made a difference for him. And I'm I, I am pumped up for Alec Pierce now. Being top ten, I'm gonna go piping hot, and I know I'm saying he could be, he can be. I'm only saying piping hot because of. You know, just the sheer amount of great receivers in the league. Now, could he be a top 15? I think that's realistic. You know, it's, it, you know, it's realistic, and it's kind of contradicting myself saying it's piping hot, but I'm kind of talking about all this as, like, an expectation, not as, like, it is happening, it will happen. He is a top 10 talent. He has a long way to... Kai, relax. Barry Dragon's going wild. Apologize. But yeah, you know, Pierce has got a long way to go. He does. And now that he's got a quarterback that's going to be there for a couple of years, maybe he could get a connection. And don't forget, Pierce ran a 4-3-3 at, well, I think he's six foot three, almost six foot four, and ran a 4-3-3. <laughs> that's wild. For his size and speed, Anthony Richardson is going to love him. Going to love him. Watch out for Alec Pierce. He could be breakout player of the year. He, he he could be that guy. I'm only saying piping hot is because he hasn't. I'm I'm going hot. Cause in three years, so you're saying three years. I was kind of just thinking next year, next year. So I'm I'm gonna go hot. Maybe that's generous. But he has that kind of ceiling. And I would like you guys to give me your thoughts on all these hot takes, this hot take. And if you enjoy this episode of Hot Take Tuesday, episode 11 of season two, I'm sorry this was a little bit of a shorter one, but I uh, got home, really had to get them out as fast as I could. Didn't think I was going to get it, but but you know what? Like I said, this Hot Take Tuesday means so much for me because it's a chance to get the ones that matter most, the fans, the people who are there every week. It's a chance to get you guys involved and you guys are part of the show and make you feel like you're involved and you're part of something great we are building an incredible community and if you would like to be part of that join the discord subscribe like stick around we're not you know once you subscribe okay that's it you're a subscriber you don't get involved who are you now no that's not me i get you involved i love doing that you guys deserve that without you guys there's no jdw sports talk show we are building an empire. We're going to build something great. We're going to influence the world together. The world. Not just the football world. We are going on to do great things. And I can promise you that. That's all I got for you guys today. Went on a little rant there. But thank you for tuning in to the JW Sports Talk Show. Where if you guys welcome. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, put the post notification bell on so you don't miss any future videos. Let's go for a like goal of 10. That's all I got for you guys today. It's the JW Sports Talk Show. Signing off. You know who that reminds me of when I do that? Peace on the streets. Song. If, if you guys get that, I'm impressed. Let me know if you guys get that. That's it. That's it. No, that's it.